Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Precisely Nowhere. I'm recording from my desk in my office for the first time in a minute because I've just been feeling lethargic some days. And by the time, I guess the past few weeks here and there, by the time I record, sometimes I just want to sit on the ground and record and not bother being at a desk, just feeling a little free with the mic and while I do love and enjoy recording that way, I was feeling in desk mode today, maybe because I didn't want to juggle as many things and I just wanted them on the desk. And Carrying the mic is nice sometimes, but it's also nice to just get to talk in the mic without having to worry about moving it around too much, which is usually in the back of my mind because I can be animated when I talk, especially when I talk on the podcast because I'm just in my zone and element. So random intro for this week. I wanted to talk about the show from scratch, which I talked about in the last episode. I'm pretty sure definitely one this month and I highly recommend it. You need to watch it if you haven't. It's on Netflix. This show is just everything. I binged it while I was walking on the treadmill and getting my daily walks in and Marco ended up watching a lot of it with me too and I was full on bawling towards the end of it. I don't want to give too many spoilers away because I am recommending this. And it, it's been out for a minute. So if you are, I mean, if I do slip some spoilers, we've all had a minute. But there were just some scenes that I really felt seen in and felt hard because of things that I've gone through in my own life and loss that I've had in my own life that happens in the show and not how you expect it either so that was the most real part of it was the way that the show was done and it's based off of a true story it's unexpected and there are twists and turns and all of the feels from happy love grief anger frustration and it's beautifully made so I, yeah, I was full on crying while eating dinner one day watching with Marco. <laughs> and it just hit home for me. I lost a an aunt a few years ago who was near and dear to me and had a huge impact on my life. It's not until you experience things like that in my from my experience that it really gives you perspective. And I've talked about it a little bit in very early on episodes, I think, about her. Her death just made a huge impact on my life. She was fairly young. She was in her, maybe in her 50s, which I feel like is pretty young and had recently retired and, you know, was getting ready to take her life back in her own hands in a sense and go do things that she's wanted to do that she hasn't been able to do because she was working so hard for so many years and had a family and you know was just an all-around amazing person and it's tragic when any life is taken but especially someone close to you and that was my first like real experience with someone close to me passing away it gave me lots of perspective on life and how I love to work but I also love to live life and I love to travel and there and feel free. I want to make sure that I do a lot of that continuously, not just putting it off or waiting, but trying to really still juggle my passions, even though it's hard. And there are days when I'm so tired from my nine to five corporate job, and I just want to veg out, do nothing, and just like turn my mind off and be numb and watch TV or scroll on social media. And I do have those days where I like give into that. And usually for me, it's binge watching TV, less social media, even though I am trying to be more active on it. I think it just lets me turn my mind off. And then I love TV shows and movies. So I get to also be in this creative world. Getting back to my point, there are days when I just want to do nothing. And then there are days when I push myself to know that I feel my best when I am taking some time for me to do things that I'm passionate about 
and that are also helping me grow as hard as it is and as tiring as it can be or as tired as I can be I do feel better once I've done something that's gonna fill my cup up it's all worth it in the end and I just wanted to share that thought because I gave in and was binge watching from scratch and I've been good with not indulging always in my I just want to be I guess lazy mode that's my workaholic self talking but it's okay to get lost in a TV show. And I was walking when I was watching a good amount of it. So still managed to be productive, but it is a true juggling act every day. And I love it, but it's for sure a labor of love. And I would give anything to also get to do this podcast all of the time so I know how much I love it and I I just want to do more of it and juggling nine to five and life responsibilities I'm just trying to make the most of it and make sure that I still keep doing the things that I love because that is important for my mental health and we all deserve to be taking care of our mental health because who else is going to do it you know it's on us at the end of the day and that is something that sometimes I can forget in a sense where you're like oh why is just all why are all these things happening to me right now in life and like why like why can't you know life just slow down a little bit like let's be chill and but we can't control the things that happen to us sometimes we just have to learn how to embrace them learn from them live with them and we have a choice whether we are going to be miserable as we do it or try to make the most of it so that is what i am doing There's a lot going on right now, but I am so grateful that I have this podcast and that I have people that are are listening and resonating with this content. And I am also grateful that I have a nine to five job and can juggle that with my passion now and have managed to make walking a habit as much as I dread it some days. (laughs) It is a habit and it's a good habit that I form. So I am determined to keep it. Balancing the physical and creative, it's a lot of baby steps with me right now. I have good, really good and not so good days. But every day I remind myself that I'm taking baby steps forward and I'll get there eventually where it's second nature for me to work out every day. And right now that's really walking three miles which isn't a lot of miles if you think about it in a the bare minimum of, of how much you should be ideally moving around also to maintain your health in the, in the long term. I'm playing the long game here. I'm not playing the short game, not trying to play the catch up game. I'm just trying to age with some grace and know that I I'm in the driver's seat of how I do that as well. So to an extent, but taking baby steps forward if you're listening to this and also are on the struggle bus sometimes with balancing your general life responsibilities and trying to maintain some sort of physical activity, you can do it. Just take baby steps and start slow at first. I started at two, three days of making a habit of something. I did that for a few weeks so that I could ease into it and get my body used to it. And then once I was doing it consistently for a few weeks, then I went to every day. And some days I don't do it every day. I have this instinct to beat myself up because I'm like, girl, come on, get it together. But at the same time, I remember and my boyfriend reminds me, it's okay to have days where you fall. It's not falling off. You just didn't do it today. And try not to beat yourself up because there are just going to be days like that. And we can embrace them or we can fight them and turn them into negative things. So I am working on embracing them and not thinking the worst, but just moving on. And the next day is a new day. Sometimes we just need these little reminders, right? I know I for sure do. Sometimes we can tell ourselves things until like the saying we're blue in the face or someone else can tell us as well but you don't hear it. And then you just, you hear it from the randomest person and it really clicks and then you're motivated and then 
you're like, I can do this. And I want to inspire you to feel that way. So here's to us taking care of our mental health, our physical health, doing the things we need to do so that we can continue thriving and living our best lives because that's definitely my goal is to live my best life. And that's not going to be a perfect life, but it's going to be me doing my best, bringing things to life that I want to bring to life because they're going to help me live my best life. So managing the pressure when you're juggling and doing things is something that I wanted to talk about in today's episode and multitasking specifically. Is it a friend or is it a foe? I used to think it was a friend and part of me still thinks it's a friend, but I read things about how multitasking is not as productive as you think it would be because you're instead of completing one thing you go to like the next thing then you go can go to a next thing and because you're juggling so many things you think oh, i'm so productive look at me look at how many things i can juggle where in reality there are times when if you just buckle down and finish that one thing that was on your plate and then before you move on to the next thing it could be more efficient depending on the task and how it's helpful to prioritize by urgency if you need help determining what to do because that I run into that professionally personally I have all these things that I want to do and I make a to-do list life happens the to-do list needs to be changed there's only so much time in the day the to-do list needs to be changed again and I have to decide what things to push and move and what things to keep so Questions I've asked myself when I try to decide what to prioritize, um, and this applies professionally, but I think it could also apply personally. I wanted to share these questions in case they help you. If you find yourself in any of these predicaments and trying to multitask a lot or decide, you know, what thing is actually more important because you're torn. I find myself torn sometimes, especially when they're are things in different aspects of my life. For instance, professionally, personally, me as a girlfriend, me as a daughter, I'm juggling and trying to prioritize all of these things that I want to do, but I have to ask myself these questions sometimes. So question number one is, how quickly does this need to be done? We all know, and I'm all too familiar because I manage projects for a living in my nine to five job, Requests come in from all places in our lives. People ask us for things. And sometimes it's like they want it right now, but you're doing something else. And then you're trying to figure out which thing to do. Maybe you don't want to let someone down. Maybe you're conflict averse. So my first question is, how quickly does this need to get done so I can assess if I can manage to do that while I'm doing my own things that I had planned on doing? or whatever else I have going on. And the second question is, what are the implications if it's not done in the ideal deadline, which would be the deadline you're given? And um, when do I think it needs to be done is a follow-up question to that. Is there a deadline that's out of my control? Because there are deadlines, but there are times when deadlines are flexible. So don't be afraid to ask yourself these questions and ask ask yourself first, I would recommend, then ask the person who's giving it to you just to get a sense. You don't need to use those specific that verbiage. What are the implications if it's not done? But definitely ask yourself when you think it needs to be done because your gut checker should be factored in. If it's something you know what you're doing and you've done it before. Ask a friend if you don't know. What is my current bandwidth and do I have the ability to take it on and it is the task without impacting my mental health, physical, and overall well-being? This is a personal line for each of us, what that line is, but it's important to check in with yourself if you find yourself overwhelmed or conflicted with priorities because it can be easy to lose sight of you at least in my experience, when I'm focused on getting everything done, 
in different aspects of my life, work, as a girlfriend, in uh, as a creator with the podcast, I can get to a point where I am not being as present as a person because I'm so hyper fixated on the tasks that I have to do and forgetting to take a beat, be present, really soak in the moment that I'm in. So I'm not perfect at this and it's a daily predicament some days on what I'm able to take on without it impacting you know my physical overall well-being but I have found it really helpful to ask myself this question especially when I'm feeling overwhelmed or unsure because it's helping me set my self up for success as well personally it might be professionally and I need to take care of me it's on me to do that others can can help and support and I'm all for that but I also have to do it we all have to do it for ourselves it starts with us the next question is can I get it done while being respectful to my boundaries and the boundaries of others around me and if I can then that's great and if I can't it's important to factor in why maybe there's a that deadline's out of your control and you need to then ask someone to do something and you and put them in a bind or you know and in those moments I would be transparent with them professional if it's in a professional setting but also transparent and vulnerable sometimes vulnerability goes a long way and I think it's important that we factor other people in our decisions when they are directly impacted this will vary depending on what the decision is but I personally try to do that because I like to be mindful of the people around me and if they're being directly implicated aka my boyfriend a lot from from certain things then I want to make sure he's he's cool with it and I'm being respectful of his boundaries you know mutual respect is so important and communicating your boundaries is very important too. So you need to know yourself. It helps to know yourself. And if you don't know yourself, start asking yourself questions and get to know yourself just like you get to know other people. The next one is to confirm with your boss or you know the person that might be asking you if you're unsure of your priorities and what they should be. So I'm a big believer that it's, 100% okay to ask for clarity if you're unclear, especially if you're new, maybe you haven't done a specific task or something before, or you're feeling overwhelmed and unsure of which what thing to prioritize. Not everyone's going to know everything and not everyone's always going to be cool, calm, collected. So get clarity, ask for it, and it may be that you need to reprioritize your day. So if that's the case, just do it. <laughs> this will vary. And I'm not saying be a pushover, but if the thing needs to get done and you can approach it from a solution-oriented mindset, I think that you're going to be better off. So the last question I would ask myself is, how can I prior reprioritize my day if needed, if this thing needs to be done? And I asked that to myself first. And then the answer is what I would maybe take to my boss or if someone asks me of something, you know, share a POV. And it's okay to not be on the same page as another person, but it's also okay to have your own idea of what is a priority to you and find that middle ground because if we don't if we're the only ones compromising and people don't compromise for us i think there's an imbalance there to each their own everyone's different but i hope these questions help you if you find yourself in a predicament with trying to figure out your priorities i know that is a struggle that i deal with on a weekly basis definitely in different aspects and not always it ebbs and flows but something to noodle on 
Procrastination. Wow. All of these hot button topics today, right? I recently learned that I procrastinate sometimes when I, before I'm about to record an episode, I learned this from my boyfriend because I guess there's a pattern that he's (laughs) found. And I, in my defense, there are times when I just want to hang out and talk to my boyfriend because I've been working all day and my bra- my brain just wants to like shoot the shit and not be in front of my computer again. So in those moments, I procrastinate. But I once I get myself in front of the mic, then it is hard to pull me away. So it's such a slippery slope double-edged sword I don't know one of them but I do procrastinate I think it's funny that he can start to tell things things that I do and I don't even realize that I'm doing them sometimes which is wild because after he mentions it I'm like wow maybe you're right and then I'm like how are you so perceptive but it is a two-way street there are things that I have picked up on from us living together that I know he's doing certain things, but he hasn't openly said it or he's procrastinating too. So I think it's funny and cute and nice that we're still learning new things about each other and we're getting to know each other really well. So it's been a year almost in a week and a half actually so pretty much pretty much a year since marco and i moved in together we met through a mutual friend and thank you if you're listening the, to this thank you for doing me a solid i owe you i owe you one for sure and because i love my boyfriend and he's an amazing person and i'm so grateful that we came into each other's lives we spent the first year long distance and i had never done been in a long distance relationship the longest long distance relationship i'd been in my only experience was my only one other relationship and that was in high school and it was long distance because we went to different high schools (laughs) they were maybe 15 minutes 20 minutes drive from each other so not not far at all but we it felt long distance at the time because a lot of my friends had boyfriends that went to our same school so they could see them during school during lunch all of the, so many opportunities and my boyfriend went to different schools so i really just saw him on the weekends and definitely knew being with someone all the time and long distance was new but i really did enjoy long distance It was the best of both worlds until I was ready to also see my boyfriend more frequently. But when I was long distance, I could do whatever I wanted (laughs) because he wasn't there and I could hang out with my friends and work however long I wanted or eat whatever I wanted, but also still talk to him during the day and at night when I got came home and FaceTime and go visit him and he visited me. So it was a nice and you miss them because you're not with them physically every day. And, and then I got to a point where I wanted to be able to be with him more often because while I did love and enjoy the long distance, it got harder and harder to leave. And it was, I would be out sometimes with friends or just doing things and wish that he were there and which was a weird feeling for me as well because I was single for over 10 years so I was used to doing things alone and or being the third wheel or just the single friend so going from long distance to living together for almost a year has had its ups its ups and downs but overall been really great and i love living with him i don't get me wrong living with a boy is also different and he's actually pretty clean 
he he is clean like he's he's not gross or messy just forgetful and where he places things sometimes so i'm like how how have you lost this thing that you just you just like touched and moved somewhere else so that drives me nuts sometimes and why he doesn't use a plate or a napkin when he's eating a cookie or certain things that have crumbs and like flake off it irks me to my core but i love that we can watch movies and tv shows together and listen to music and talk and eat meals together and sleep in the same bed every night there are lots of pros to living with him and it has been pretty great i would say so i wasn't fully planning on talking about living with a partner but when in rome and it's a different experience for everyone i i know that my experience is not everyone's experience but i What I do also know is I spent a really long time being single because I had one other relationship where I I changed myself and not for the better to be with someone because of what I felt like they needed me to be. And I was young and I learned. And what I learned was that I am enough and if someone needs to change me or needs me to sacrifice my morals well I don't need to be with that person and if someone doesn't bring the best out of me and truly doesn't treat me the way I should be treated which and I have self-worth and sometimes that ebbs and flows in life and so i'm not bashing anyone that you know maybe needs a a little bit more self-love but we gotta love ourselves first ladies we just gotta do it men too you gotta love yourself and be willing to know that you will find someone who will love and appreciate the real you and you will you will but you have to have boundaries and hold people accountable and still compromise but really have your non-negotiables that you're like nah this is it and if you do for some reason break my trust you have to just generally know in your heart that this person wants the best for you at the end of the day and would not take advantage of you and until you find that have fun date around but do you and really love yourself and live your best life because we can't be waiting around for the right person we can actively be going out there trying to do things to find the right person work on ourselves date intentionally ask friends if they know anyone and tell your friends what you're looking for that's how i found my boyfriend it was manifesting and taking my feet in my own hands and just asking all of my friends even friends that i wasn't the best of friends with but i knew that knew me as a person you never know i took a shot in the dark there asking my the friend that i asked i asked was uh one of my gay guy friends who i knew was had a boyfriend and also had a lot of other gay guy friends but i was like you never know he's a friendly person he's a good person and i know that if he would recommend someone he would he would be giving me a a good person he's not gonna recommend trash you know so very grateful for you you know who you are and i love you i haven't i haven't spoken to this friend in a minute because he also had a cross-country move and has had a lot of change and also has his own life so i i get it i you know we all go through ebbs and flows with our friends but i'm hoping to see him sometime sometime soon because we're both in the same state now baby steps with juggling everything and 
Yeah. If you can take away anything from today's episode, it is to love yourself, give yourself some grace, and try to practice gratitude when you're feeling over it or overwhelmed or gloomy or blue. It's in those moments where I try to really dig deep and remember all of the things that I have that I am grateful for, like my health and my family, this podcast, my job at the end of the day. I mean, I do love the people I work with and I love my job. So I'm grateful for that and grateful for all of the amazing people that I work with. The vibes, the work vibes are really great. And I have not always had that. So I am very grateful for that. And just so many more things. Exercise and challenge for you. If you're listening, it's to write down three things that you're grateful for today. You can do it on your phone, on a notebook. I love a notebook. And then write down, start with today and try to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do the same. And I would love for you to do it with me. I will share the three things that I'm grateful for in next episode. Three more things. And I love you all. And can't wait to talk to you soon. Next episode is the first guest interview of many more to come. But it is guest interview episode number one. Super stoked for it. And it is such a great episode. I don't want to tease too much of it because it's worth it's worth the listen, but I recommend tune in and thank you for listening. I love having this as a creative outlet and safe space and a digital diary that I can come back to years down the line and listen back on how much I've grown and the thoughts and opinions that I had and shared and (laughs) probably have some feelings on everything. But I'm also deciding to live life and embrace the present and now and who try to give two less fucks on what people think about me and the things that I say. And if you vibe with this, then you vibe with this. And I am here for you. And if you don't vibe with this, that's okay too. Not everyone's cup of tea, but um, glad, glad that I'm your cup of tea. I will talk to you all soon. Have a wonderful rest of your week whenever you're listening to this. Bye. Music and editing done by Marco. You can find him at midnight, M-I-D-N-I-T-E underscore mind eight zero on Instagram for more of his work.